Uh, you all have been so instrumental in, uh, in my elections in 2002 and, and 2008, and I want to express personally my gratitude for that. I'm delighted to be here with my friend Norm Coleman, who uh, I just want to tell you, Norm is one of my personal heroes. You know, if you think about it, three million votes, roughly three million votes, and 225 votes separation between him and Al Franken. I should say 225 votes between Al Franken and America. Um, and a lesser person might say, you know what, this is too hard. It's too hard on my family. Uh, I just want to move on down the road. But Norm has been a real fighter, and he stood up for us and for the voters of Minnesota to make sure that every legitimate vote is counted through this arduous legal process. And uh, I know you're behind him 110%, and I want you to know that his colleagues in the United States Senate are behind him 110% as well. So, Norm, it's great to be with you. Keep on fighting. When Norm and I came to the Senate in 2002, we had 55 Republicans. Today, we have 41, plus a lawsuit in Minnesota that Norm's going to win. We'll have 42. But in a uh, disastrous election like we've just experienced in 2008, where we've lost the White House, our numbers in the House have become further eroded, it is, I believe, in the United States Senate where we have the best opportunity to begin to uh, gain greater influence on what comes out of the world's greatest deliberative body, what comes out of the U.S. government, and what its impact is on each of us and on the world that we live in. And we've seen as uh, our numbers have eroded that it's harder and harder on any specific piece of legislation to hold 41 senators together. Our goal must be to gain uh, some seats in 2010 and to work our way back, hopefully by 2012, uh, back in the majority, because you know, the majority gives you the right, the power to set the agenda, which means that if Mitch McConnell were majority leader, you wouldn't see card check coming to the floor of the United States Senate. And you sure wouldn't see a budget like this turkey that has been proposed that we'll be debating over the next few weeks uh, come to the floor of the United States Senate. If uh, Judd Gregg was chairman of the Budget Committee, uh, you wouldn't see anything like, uh, like this budget uh, that's come before us. And I would say that, uh, just to add to some of the earlier comments that have been made, I think while none of us can deny the charm and the uh, intelligence and the articulateness of our new president, at the same time, you have to really scratch your head and wonder what lessons did he learn out of this election. He thinks, I believe, that this was somehow a mandate for change. But what kind of change? Well, Michael and others will tell you that the uh, public did not change its views, and we are still basically a center-right country. But this president somehow in his cabinet, by calling, for example, terrorists man-made disasters, by uh, using video diplomacy uh, with Iran and demonstrating the kind of weakness that does nothing but embolden our enemies, and by demonstrating the kind of naivete that I think uh, he and his administration have already begun to demonstrate, I do believe that they did not learn the lessons of 9-11. They still believe that we ought to treat terrorists as common criminals. And I hope that as the president I, and I truly believe this, as I hope he matures in office, as I hope he learns more from his daily intelligence briefings about the dangers that confront us, uh, I hope he will change his views because we cannot afford to have a president for four years that is stuck in a pre-9-11 mentality where we treated terrorism like a crime and where we devalued the importance of obtaining actionable intelligence through interrogation and detention of dangerous people. And of course, this budget that you'll hear more about in the next few weeks that this president has proposed spends too much, taxes too much, and imposes too much debt on our children and grandchildren. And you will hear all of the Republicans, like a unified chorus, rise up in opposition to this budget that would, if enacted, permanently change America 
for the worse. The challenge we have from an uh, electoral point of view uh, is how do we, how do we get back uh, where we were able to have a greater influence on outcomes by making sure that on any given, uh, any given vote we can muster at least 41 senators in opposition to block terrible legislation and hopefully to shape and improve legislation that can be shaped and improved. And that means we need more numbers. And I want to talk to you briefly about our opportunities in 2010. Thank goodness uh, this president has done something else and good things, and that has given us some opportunities in places we would least expect. For example, Barack Obama left his Senate seat in Illinois. Joe Biden left his Senate seat in Delaware. Hillary Clinton left her Senate seat in New York, and Ken Salazar left his Senate seat in Colorado. And let's not forget Governor Sebelius in uh, Kansas, who would have been really the only viable Democrat who could threaten to take that seat from Republican hands to Democratic hands. Illinois, what can I say? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Governor Blagojevich. Thank you, Roland Burris. We have an opportunity that uh, really, who, who could have imagined it? But I don't think there's any scenario under which anyone who is a product of this corrupt machine in Chicago and in Illinois could be said to be a good candidate in 2010. Uh, they're trying to play cleanup by uh, people like Bill Daley stepping forward and saying he's going to run. But I, I dare say that there is no one who could be nominated by the uh, Democrats in 2010 who will be able to uh, be uh, totally separated from the corruption that's given us uh, Governor Blagojevich and the machine in Chicago. So I view Illinois being a great opportunity for us if we get the right candidate. In Delaware, Senator Kaufman has been uh, appointed as a caretaker senator. He doesn't, is not going to run for re-election again, former chief of staff for uh, Joe Biden, uh, in order to hold the seat to keep it warm for Bo Biden, uh, who's now deployed in Iraq. While I appreciate Bo's uh, service in, on behalf of his country, I don't think the people of Delaware feel like this is a, some sort of dynasty where, uh, where Senate seats should be handed down one, from one generation to the next. And indeed, if Mike Castle, uh, the former two-term Republican governor of Delaware, decides to run, and he's seriously considering that, he's got, he was reelected with 61 percent of the vote in Delaware uh, to the House of Representatives. And of course, Delaware is one of those places, unlike Texas, where you have two senators and one congressman. So Mike's already run statewide. He got 61 percent of the vote in his last election. If he decides to run, I think we have a very good chance of picking up Delaware. New York. Well, we know that Peter King and uh, Governor Pataki are both considering a run for Hillary Clinton's seat. Here, another bungled appointment and an opportunity where we would have uh, you know, not imagined our chances existing before. Colorado, uh, very smart man. Uh, Senator Bennett been appointed, but he's been superintendent of the uh, Denver School District and never run for public office before, has no political base there. If we have a good candidate in Colorado, I see an opportunity to pick up another Senate seat there. And we have a number who have stepped forward and are seriously considering that. In New Hampshire, uh, John Sununu was a big loss to the United States Senate in 2008, one of the smartest guys uh, that, that we uh, had among our peers. Judd Gregg, who at first uh, blush tried to take the president's uh, offer for bipartisan governance seriously but found out how long that lasted and how insincere uh, those gestures were, uh, said he was going to, uh, to accept a position at Commerce and ultimately declined when he realized uh, that uh, they were not only going to move the census to Rahm Emanuel's office and out of Commerce, but uh, that he would have to uh, basically st stand mute in the face of a radical budget like the one we've seen proposed by the president. And Judd Gregg, uh, is a big, going to be a big loss. We're working hard to find good candidates in, um, in New Hampshire. A number have stepped forward and said that they're interested in talking to us from former governors to uh, business leaders. And indeed, uh, John Sununu has not, uh, has, not, uh, has not said he will not run. So we'll see how that develops.